We're going to replace the rear coolant flange on this 2.0T Audi Volkswagen engine. It's a bit far back on the side of the head. There's a few things you need to take off to get to it, but ours is currently leaking some coolant and needs to be replaced. Right here is below the vacuum pump, and this is the heater core supply hose, and this is one of the hoses that has a rubber seal in it. And if that gets oil on it, which you can see there's definitely oil soaking in here, that rubber is gonna swell and it's gonna start leaking coolant. In order to get space, you need to remove this, which is the vacuum pump. It powers a few things like the brake booster, and it's gonna free up a whole lot of space on the back, and now you're actually gonna be able to fit a wrench back there. I'll be able to drain a majority of the coolant out of the reservoir, because when you take that coolant flange off, there's still gonna be a coolant that comes out, but maybe a little less. In order to get orientation on this flange that's mounted on the back of the head, this is the position that it is right now where it's mounted. You have one bolt right up here and then another bolt right on the bottom there. You have an outlet or this is where the coolant temperature sensor hooks up to with a clip. And then this is a coolant supply. And then on the bottom here is where it hooks up and goes to the heater core. For the T30 Torx, I'm gonna remove both of the bolts. And there's one of them. Now the very bottom line, which is the line that goes to the heater core, I'm gonna disconnect that before I remove the last bolt. I pop up that metal clip, and then as soon as I pull this off, it's gonna go flowing everywhere, so be ready for that. But just with pulling that metal clip up, we'll slowly work it off. There we go. The main coolant supply line that runs across the intake goes back to that flange as well. So there's a T30 Torx that I'll remove right here. There's another one right here. Holding on the fuel line is a triple square, so we'll remove that. We'll pull this clamp off so that that coolant supply line can come out. I just used a regular pair of pliers to pull that clamp off. I'll use a pick to loosen up that hose. We'll pull this clamp back. I'll pull this off and I'll also expect a bit of coolant to leak out. I'm gonna attempt to try to collect some of this when it comes out, but it might not work at all. There's some. Now to get to the second bolt, I'm just gonna reach behind with a little extension and take that bolt out. And here's the second one. The flange is disconnected from the bolts and then the only connection I have, which is going to the main coolant supply line and this connector that connects to the coolant temperature sensor. Lift the flange with the hose out. We'll pull these clamps off and we'll pull it out. If we look at the old one, which is right here and the new one, which is right here, there's a difference between the seals. The old one is more deteriorated, it's flat, and it's more close to the diameter of the plastic. The new one's a lot fresher, more of a grippy rubber, and it sticks out farther, which would give you a better seal. Here's the hose that connects to the bottom of that flange, and it's what goes up to the heater core. Now a seal, which is one that can really commonly leak on these tubes, is that gray one right there. And whenever oil gets on that, maybe dripping from the vacuum pump on top, it can swell, which will cause it to not seal anymore, and you have a leak. You can buy each one of these replacement parts individually, or you can get it as a kit. This is a kit with all the pieces, new heater core lines, new flange, a bunch of new seals, and the whole kit's about $101.